Could your favorite video games actually be preying on you, manipulating you, even potentially ruining your life and the lives of your loved ones because of how gaming has evolved in the last few years? Welcome to a very special Tugs Afternoon Edition about addiction. Now let's be serious here and say that video game related addiction is nothing new. No. When video games first became mainstream, they were an extremely addictive addition to the entertainment industry. Yeah. We've all been there. Your mom's screaming at you to go outside and do something with your life, but you want to find all the secret hidden items of Donkey Kong Country, or you need just one more try to nail the perfect combo in Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2. I think we just aged ourselves quite a bit. But you know what we're talking about. Yeah, you, you, you can't, can't put, put it, it down. down. Yeah, Addiction has been around forever, and as soon as companies figured out ways to monetize addiction, they started doing it. A recent example from the last couple hundred years or so would obviously be cigarettes and tobacco. Mm. People were smoking it anyway, but companies found out ways to make it more addictive and do it legally, so they did. Uh, casinos in Las Vegas and around the world provide a fun time for some people, but it's very easy to slip into a mindset that doesn't allow you to walk away from those tables. Those casinos use mental tricks and stimulations to keep you in there and keep you gambling. Stimulating lights, free drinks, odd carpeting patterns, lack of sunlight so you lose track of time, and in some cases even extra oxygen being pumped in to keep you awake and gambling longer. Wait, really? Yep. What? Yes. Jesus Christ, Vegas! Yeah, look, look it up. That's fucked up, right? Yeah. Well, same thing happens in a ton of other industries and you don't even notice it. Mm -hmm. That's the entire point. If you knew you were being played, you wouldn't allow it to happen as easily as it does. Recently, gaming companies have started monetizing addiction in brilliant, terrible new ways. Mm -hmm. Ways that aren't just giving you a gaming experience you can't walk away from after putting down $60 for a new title, they're getting money from you after you've bought the game on a frequent basis for essentially nothing in return. And you're handing it over just as quickly as you possibly just can. take the money! And we could talk about how mobile games have done this with their freemium model over the past few years, and yeah, it's totally true. They prey on their users, and even though they won't outwardly admit it, they prey on the user's parents as well. For most of these freemium games, they put the game out at no cost and then charge you for supplies to build things, tokens to play longer, enhancements to weapons or attire, or just allowing you to straight up cheat. These are, for the most part, called microtransactions, and they work well because you're only spending a little bit at a time, but they can quickly add up. South Park had a great episode specifically about this stuff, so just go watch that instead. We'll save you the time. They do so it way funnier. What we're talking about this week is how Blizzard's Overwatch is bringing microtransactions into the AAA gaming space oh and into the no. mainstream. God damn it, Shibby. Yeah. And yes, before we talk about it, we do have to acknowledge that CSGO has already perfected this tactic with their bullshit crate openings where you can get a rare weapon skin of stuff from it. Mm -hmm. This has even spawned an entire entertainment medium dedicated to not only watching other people spend their money to open crates, but lottery and gambling sites where you can gamble valuable in-game items through a third party. Hey, T-Mar mm. and Syndicate are great CSGO players. Mm. So holy shit, right? Well, as big as CSGO is, this Overwatch thing might be even bigger because of its cross-platform success and the way that it allows you to do crate openings, or in their case, loot box openings, on any of those platforms, Xbox One, PS4, and PC. Let's break this down for you. Yeah, Overwatch. Let's, let's rap about it for a second. I pull up a chair and sit in the backwards. Let's yeah. break this down. Overwatch, which is Blizzard's new FPS, it's basically a modern version of TF2 and was released this week, is a great game. It's great. It's fluid, it's fun, it handles well, and it's great to pick up and play for a few matches or to go all night with. Mm -hmm. The characters are unique. They all have their own special abilities and specific talents that they add to the battlefield. But in addition to that, and like most games these days, Overwatch, offers cosmetic upgrades to the characters in the form of skins, wall graffiti, winning stances, and custom dialogue phrases. I'm sure I'm missing something, but you get the gist of it. Did we nail it? Is that all you can get with it? Yeah, I also like how your shirt right here... It says ass. I know, we've been over it. In order to unlock these items, you need to get loot boxes. Loot boxes are given to you every time you level your character, which obviously becomes increasingly time-consuming as you go along. Or you could just fork over a couple of bucks and uh, get to open in any number of loot boxes right now. And, you know, then you can try your luck at landing the skin or emote that you want for your character. But it's all random, so you never know if you're going to get what you want unless you save up the credits for it. Which 
they get expensive. And surprise, surprise, you can only get credits from loot boxes in the form of straight up winning them or cashing out on a duplicate item that you win. True. Mm -hmm. Technically, there's really nothing wrong with doing that, except that a lot of people, especially children, who are dumb, don't have much self-control. Even more so if their parents' credit cards are attached to their console, and they can just go for it. Yeah. Take your fucking credit card off the fucking console. Yes. The system creates a scenario of intrinsic motivation for the user who is constantly getting rewarded for paying money into something and chasing an outcome that they might not get. Yeah. It's pretty close to gambling, except in reality, you get literally nothing. Yeah. It doesn't <laughs> exist. Yeah. It's all digital, and as an example, your only goal is to make your character look like a fucking pirate or some shit. Yeah. A lot of games allow you the ability to buy skins for your character directly, or just work for them. And while that's still an easy way to make money on a game that's already created and that people have already paid for, at least you know what you're getting with the money that you're giving to them. There's also a whole thing with the fact that it feels good to open the loot boxes. It works the same way with the CSGO boxes too. When you when you win something that you actually get, you feel good. A rush of endorphins. It really does. It This game specifically, when and you agree, yep, you play it, great. it gives you a rush of endorphins when you open a loot box. The suspense of what you're gonna get, finally seeing what it is, even if you don't like what it is, you're gonna use it, and the, the fact that you're collecting it. The air, you're like, oh, there's a They purple. have perfected this like mental manipulation with does this Does it game. also say, you're a good person. Yeah, thanks for playing. People like you. But anyway, after DLC started permeating through the gaming atmosphere, people were quick to complain that they shouldn't have to pay more money for the same game, or something that should have been included in the initial game, or something that was held back on purpose in order to charge for. Well, we've all just kind of accepted it now, and DLC is used to extend the life of a game, this new kind of monetization tactic spits in the face of everyone who complained about DLC. Yeah. Because it pretty much offers you nothing new, but everyone's leaping over themselves to throw money at it. It's fucking genius. I'm not gonna deny that. Yeah, we are not denying how smart this is. I'm just pissed that I wasn't the one that came up with no, it. No, I was saying uh, yesterday, I was like, I think Overwatch is gonna make more money in its like third week than it did on initial game sales. So, uh, we're not even, we're, we're not here, we're not saying that Overwatch is a bad game. That's far from the truth. And we're not saying at all that Overwatch is the only game to do this or will be the only one that continues to do this. We're just saying that you should be careful and make sure that you're aware of how you're spending your money and what you're spending it on. It feels good to open a loot box, but are you really gonna give a shit about these skins in a few months or even years? Yes. Because, shut up, ships. You're definitely gonna feel a lot better with some extra money in your pocket and it really, really does add up. 30 days in a month and yes. you're playing this game every single day, even if you buy like one $5 thing a day, you are spending a fuck ton of money. Yeah, so if you don't spend that, you save that up, just put like every time you wanna buy a loot box, put it in a, in a little like piggy bank, and then yeah. at the end of the month, you go down to the Indian casino and you spend it all <laughs> yeah. on gambling and cigarettes, Yeah, and they're tax free at the casino. So it's No fine. taxes, That's it's great. way cheaper. It's, it's the way best to... deal on cigarettes you can get. <laughs> you, you spend it there and you, who knows, you might be able to get back two times, three times, four times, a hundred times when you put it down at the casino. And the thing it's is, way is better deal. if you don't win the first time, just double up yeah. the bet. Because you're gonna hit it eventually. Yeah, if you <laughs> just the, drain the, the bank longer account, you lose, the, the higher, the, higher the chances are yeah, that's, that's you gonna be. winning. Yeah, it's very simple. Let's go yeah. to the fucking casino. Yeah, let's go. Well, <laughs> uh, we're fucking broke now, so... Uh, nothing in my pocket. I guess we should keep doing this show so we can make some some more of that sweet, sweet YouTube money so we can yeah. gamble it on uh, loot boxes. But we're, we're done with being dads for now. We can run through some video game news that happened this week, starting with the fact that Xbox finally just said, Hey, wait a fucking second! Sony, you never told us you were gonna beef up your console! That is not fair! Well, I'll tell you what we're gonna do! We're, we're, gonna, beat up, we're gonna beef up our console too! Yeah, 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 fuck that. Uh, and then they were also secretly mumbling in the background, saying like, the fucking Sony, none of us want to work on a new console, you son of a bitch. This thing was supposed to last at least a decade. <laughs> so technically they are coming out with two new consoles. One's just a smaller version of the original Xbox One, which was too big to begin with, so yeah. that's good. Yeah, the original <laughs> was a monster. It's like twice the size of the PS4. It's a VCR with, with a disc slot in the too big, and then it additionally has that fucking power brick. Like. Where, 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 where's all the space going? PS4 has internal power regulations. It's got a little... It's a beautiful console. Uh, anyway, the second console, though, is their updated console. Codename, Scorpio. It's a freak in the sheets. <laughs> and it does not It does get all the kinky it stuff. It doesn't get along with <laughs> Libras. Yeah. Uh, so Scorpio will be a faster machine all around. It'll come with a bigger hard drive because 500 gigs is, uh... Should be illegal. Nowhere <laughs> yeah. near big enough to support multiple AAA titles anymore. Yeah, it's like uh, getting a tablet that has 8 gigs or 16 yeah. gigs on it. Go fuck yourself. Hey, guess what? It runs the operating system. Yeah. Bye, you fucking idiot. You'll just run off the cloud. What's yeah. the problem? <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, except when you're on an airplane and they don't let you stream any of that. Whoops. Whoops. The bigger news here is that this new Xbox might be able to support the Oculus Rift, which might actually make the Rift useful for once after getting repeatedly beaten to a pulp by the HTC Vive. We would also imagine that it would be set up to work with Microsoft's upcoming HoloLens as well, because it would be really short-sighted if they didn't somehow make that work properly. Oh god, we need a third console. Oh, damn it. <laughs> uh, you would assume that both of these consoles would be announced at E3 in just a few weeks, but since E3 is on its deathbed, who knows if they or anyone else will actually show up. Yeah, E3. Turns out... Turns out we should have invited the public. Yeah, whoops. Yeah. Even though anyone who knows someone who works at a GameStop can be a, a member of the industry. It's Garrett, never been Mark hard. my words, next year E3 will be open to the public. It has to be. Mm -hmm. Why? E3 fucking sucks. <laughs> like, it does. It's <laughs> terrible. It's so fucking boring. Anything good, the lines are ridiculous. Yeah, you just go to the parties afterwards. It's great. Yeah, the all party, game companies parties are all their great. money around. Please do not rescind my invitation <laughs> yeah. to those parties. We want to go to the parties. I want They're the, the parties. Best. We will judge your game exclusively on how great your party is. We've been doing yeah. that. War gaming, great game. Great company. Oh, blow, the best game on earth. Best titles. Yeah, they had Zed play at their party last year oh, or the year oh before. Gosh. Yeah, great Man. game. Great game. Anyway, uh, <laughs> Hey guys, remember that insanely ambitious game, No Man's Sky, that was gonna change the way we play video games and allow us infinite possibilities and the ability to find randomly generated plants and creatures and take them on a... Uh, uh, you remember that game? Yeah. Yeah, the game that was originally promoted three fucking years ago, and the same game who has changed its release date numerous times. Well, here's a big surprise. They're pushing that shit back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pushing that shit back! <laughs> Woo! Uh, oh, Oh god, uh, this is just a rumor for now, but at this point it wouldn't be very shocking to anyone if it turned out to be true. It is strange that it's literally coming down to the wire though, because this game was supposed to finally hit shelves next month in June. There's something, someone working at GameStop who's going to be going to E3 this year sent materials that they'd received over to Kotaku, which state, The release date for No Man's Sky has changed since the provided posters were printed. Please use a coming soon pop-up to cover up the date and communicate as needed to your guest about the change of release. Now this is a bummer because this game actually had us excited, despite not really knowing what the point of it is. It's like Pokemon for the universe. Sure, it, it looks nice and it seems like there was some cool stuff you could fuck around with. Plus, I just want my own planet like those crazy Mormons. <laughs> And this game was gonna allow me to have one. Yeah. But now it looks like we're gonna have to wait just a little bit longer for me to land on Ricktopia. Gosh, mm -hmm. all those Mormon plants. Yeah, they're great. It's a bunch of wives mm -hmm. and a bunch of kids that don't do anything bad. Orlando. That's the Mormon. They, everyone wants to go there. Yeah. Let's talk about something else. Something you can play right now. Yeah. And have been able to play for two months. This time, they swear they got it right because the division just dropped a free huge update to its game, which actually makes it a lot better after the first update had fans upset and dropping the game entirely. Some of the changes from the first will stick around, but they've dumped a ton of new stuff to do into the game, especially if you're a solo player. Because you don't have friends. I'm, I'm a solo player. First and foremost, there's a uh, new end game incursion or boss battle or raid or whatever you want to call it. It takes place in Columbus Circle called Clear Sky. Plays out more like one of those typical division missions and less like the horde mode that they put into the last incursion that was Falcon Lost. Uh, but the biggest update to the game is the high value target missions, which are given on a separate daily and weekly basis. You collect intel and spend it on getting information on where the high value target is, which you go to and then attempt to take them out. They're almost like micro missions, but they pay out Phoenix credits and loot. Uh, there's also some Dark Zone changes, including the ability to fuck someone's extraction up by cutting the rope attached to their helicopter and just taking their items away. So it's good for trolling. Very mischievous. Yeah, I still love this game, so that's obviously why we're t I'm talking about it. Uh, but let's get another passionate gamer in here uh -oh. to talk about his favorite pastime, gaming, and his other favorite pastime, letting people know which games are Jolly Wogglers and which games are Jimmy Dodgers. Take it away, ships. Oh, oh it's All that right. donkey from the game. Donkey? Yeah, yes. Gorilla. Yeah, it's so, <laughs> let me stumble through another review. Alright, so because these two shitlords were out of the office, it's been a while since we've done a Tugs episode as a group. First on my review list, not Overwatch, is Doom. I don't know what's going on here. Now you might say, but shibby. There it is. The last game that ID Software developed was Rage, and that game sucked ass. I agree. Doom 3 is also pretty meh. However, Doom 2016 Never. is fucking awesome. Not many games, as you viewers know, Uber. get the shibby. Get the Uber. Promo code Shibby. Uh, stamp, Shibby stamp for approval, it doesn't matter. But this is one of them. Sure, the multiplayer is bland and not great. Sure, just sure. like Ricky and Ben. I'll be the first one to admit that. Oh, thank you, ID Software, I appreciate it. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm the guy from Doom. Uh, come on, say right, the, the multiplayer was developed from another studio, apparently. Regardless, much like Battlefront not having a campaign, I'll give the Doom multiplayer a pass. Because the single player campaign is so damn good. Uh, 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 give it more! Uh, good, all right, here we go, I'll give you another paragraph. The action begins right away, and the game itself is... The game itself is... Wait, Spit it oh, out! The game is self-aware, Jesus Christ. Such as calling the protagonist the Doom Marine, like Winston. Movement mechanics, not having sprint. Movement move, 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 mechanics. <laughs> move, move mechanics. Movement mechanics. Is that one of those uh, cosmetic upgrades you can buy? <laughs> yeah, that you can purchase. Yeah. Uh, so there's no sprint in the game, right? Because it's already fast. The no reload fan, uh, mechanic is also fantastic. So the game, not having sprint, has a walk slow button, but versus like a Call of Duty, that has a sprint button. So it's very telling that the Doom mechanics are fast because the game is already quick. The, prog the progression system, blah, 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 blah. It feels right. The weapons, it, it feels great. Thank you. Uh, 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 the upgrade system to health, armor, and ammo. The rune system itself are all great. Uh, the glory kills are brutal. That's where you go up and melee and rip, you know, their throats out and stuff. Uh, the music, which has metal music that I usually don't like, that Ricky loves. Yeah. It also has uh, electronic elements bumped in, and it's great. It gets you fucking amped during engagements. It really does. It really gets your. Uh, Keep saying nice things. Uh, overall, uh, Doom 2016 is the best shooter campaign I've ever oh. played. Yeah, there better be like a 20 in there. It's fast. The maps are not- I'm more... waiting for the score. For I don't the want I don't want that Alexander in my mouth. Alexander Hamilton! Look, it's <laughs> fast. Alex. The maps are non-linear hallways, unlike Call of Duty. The secrets are fun and rewarding to search for. Weapon variety is great, and killing demons from hell? Talk about good Christian values. This game, I must rate 10 out of 10. Woo! And we need more games like this. And I will not be surprised if this is my game of the year. All right, give him the rest of the Oh, light. the 10. Yeah, 10 out of 10 gets you 10. Thank you. <coughs> All right. Uh, thanks, ID Software. I appreciate it. Yeah, no worries. Enjoy my Whoa. review. That's how reviews work. Yeah. When people say nice things, they get money, right? Quid pro quo. This for that. This, yeah. But Chibi will get to see what hell looks like for real when he goes there for being so <laughs> blasphemous and loving a game like this. Take it from this person who goes by the username Cheap House Cleaning <laughs> and reviewed Doom 3 way back in the day, titling it Not For The Regular Joe. I just played for almost an hour and was disappointed. There's just too much occultism there. Pentagrams everywhere since the start. <laughs> Even the loading icon was a pentagram. I just can't enjoy it being a Jesus follower. I threw away $45. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what he thought he was getting with the game called Doom. And it, it's very, like, the, the original box art was, like, yeah, it was very satanic, violent. yeah. He, I think they had fucking ESRB ratings by the time Doom 3 came out. Oh, most certainly they did. I mean, I was down to use a chainsaw to cut off various <laughs> people's faces in a, in a fit of violent rage, but... Don't then bring I saw that Satan in They this. put a pentagram as the loading oh. wheel. Oh no! I thought I'd just rip the heads off of demons and piss down their throats. I just can't handle seeing a pentagram. Who? Who? A pentagram. But I also like to think that so when he, when whoever this is made this review back then, their username was something different. Yeah. And now their career is doing cheap house cleaning. Oh. So that's good. Like they're selling the service on Amazon or some shit? No, I think they're just trying to, trying to be brand aware. Oh. They're getting their brand out there on everything. Anyways, uh, we have other content over here that you should watch because it's better than this show. Yeah. We have a brand new episode of Weekly Weird News where there's a sex reality show. And this time, it's actually happening. Yeah, and then there's Tech Tuesday where more porn news. So, yeah, uh, this, it's porn everywhere. It's porn for you to uh, help you be less out of shape. And then we do a review of Warcraft. And uh, I like the game. A lot of you hate the game, but I like the movie too. And he hasn't played the game and he liked the movie. So go watch that too. Check it out. And we'll see you guys. <laughs> Check it out. Check it out. <laughs>